Hey, how's it going everyone? Marco Moreno here. Today is Sunday, April 14, 2024. And I'm here to talk about the one of the most amazing UFCs of all time. UFC 300 yesterday. It delivered. It was uh, an amazing event. Great fights. There was no one superstar like a Conor McGregor or John Jones, but there was a lot of good fights, amazing knockouts, submissions, and he had everything that a great event should have. A lot of underdogs won. So I'm gonna do a little recap. And let's start with the main event. Alex Pereira versus Jamal Hill. It was uh, an amazing knockout. Alex Pereira is just ridiculously skilled. He has a great power punch. In the first round, Alex Pereira threw a left hook, which is his, his signature punch, um, put him out, knock him down, and just start hammer fisting on the ground. And it was funny because right before the knockout, Jamal Hill kicked Pereira in the groin and Herb Dean came to stop the fight. And without looking at him, Pereira said, no, I'm fine. And like seconds later, knock him out. Uh, one left hook and you can see Hill's eyes roll back, went to the ground, move a little bit. So Herbding allowed the fight to continue, but it was over. A few more hammer fists and Pereira won that fight. He made it look easy against a great fighter as Yamaha Hill. And he's the champion and he's gonna be a champion for a long time, I believe. The co-main event was Weili Zhang and Xionan Zhan. This was a fight for the women's strawweight title fight. It was good fight. It had it went all five rounds, but this I think didn't have all the elements of a common event. They could easily could have put it on the not the common event, but it could also have been because. It was right after the amazing fight between Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway. So people were already kind of drained from their adrenaline they dumped on that fight. So this fight didn't have all the surprise elements. It was a good fight. Um, Wei Li Zhang beat uh, Shonan Zhang uh, pretty clear. I think there was only one round that Jan uh, beat uh, Wei Li Shan. One of the amazing things that happened in this fight was in the first round. Wei Li Zhang caught a rear naked choke fully deep and it was only a few seconds left to the end of the round and then the round finished and she let go of the rear naked choke and it appeared that Jan was asleep for like two seconds. When she let go, she was still feel like she was sleeping. And then she woke up and she wobbled up and she was lost and went to her corner and then kept fighting and did and fought all the five rounds. So she was tough. That fighter, Xionan Yang was super tough. She also got caught in a head and arm triangle later on. Uh, there were many times where it looked like she was finished, but she was good. She she gave Willie Shan a great fight, but uh, she clearly lost, and Willie Shan is the clear champion in this division. It was a good fight. It wasn't the best fight of, of the night, which comes next. The best fight of an amazing event was the fight between Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway. And they were fighting for the BMF belt. And it was an unbelievable fight. The first round started, they were 
pretty even, they were kicking. You could see a little bit of an edge of Max Holloway being a little more precise on his strikes, but something happened at the end of the first round uh, when Holloway threw a spinning back kick that hit Justin Gage directly in the nose. And it, what, it happened at the last second. Gage he went to his corner, touching his nose, and you can hear the conversation where he's saying, I cannot breathe, and, but I'm fine. I keep going to keep fighting. What a tough mentality these guys have, these fighters. Really, it's almost not human. So he kept fighting without being able to breathe, and he went all five rounds. In the second round, there was an eye poke, I think maybe even two. So the guy, Justin Gagey, couldn't breathe, and then he got eye poke once, and so he couldn't see. They gave him a break. They kept fighting a minute later. He got a, a second eye poke. So it was a terrible night for Justin Gagey, but he recovered on the third round. Um, in my opinion, he lost the second and third round, but the fourth round, he came back, he rocked Holloway, and it looked like the fifth round, it was gonna be all Justin Gagey. But a little bit more of the same, Holloway kept picking him apart with strikes. He was the most precise, the quicker. Justin Gagey couldn't figure him out and Justin um, Max Holloway really had the, the fight on the back but something really unbelievable happened 10 seconds before the end of the last round Max Holloway invited Gaethje to come to the middle and throw it down the last 10 seconds he had the fight already won he could have just let the 10 seconds pass and he could have just won his fight and that's it and I've seen fighters doing this and it's, the fans love it sometimes they get the fight of the night because the, those last few seconds they just forget about technique forget about strategy forget about everything and they give the fans what fans like right a uh, festival of punches just like a street brawl. They got in the middle and they start punching and Keishi took the invitation. He, he was a fighter after all. He knew what was that all about and he knew that that could have been his last chance to beat Holloway, right? So they both start swinging at each other and with one second left, Holloway connected a right hand that put Keishi out and the crowd just went crazy that was the one of the most amazing knockouts in the history of the UFC because it was at the last second Holloway was the underdog everybody believed that Keishi including me that Keishi was gonna beat Holloway because he was the heavier guy it's always tough when light guys had to move up in weight, but also how much of a BMF Holloway is by doing that and pulling it off at the last second. So he totally deserved it. I think he got like a $300,000 bonus and he just showed that Holloway is a legend in the sport. With this fight, he cemented his legacy. He's one of the best ever and the guy is just unbelievable. He, he had already a great career and he had those, the trilogy with Volkanovski was amazing. But with this belt, I think the legacy, the name of Max Holloway is just gonna skyrocket to Hall of Fame UFC 100%. For those interested in mastering Jiu Jitsu, Stop trying to learn random techniques in a disorganized way. You're making it harder than it should be. Check out Mastery Jiu Jitsu Online, where we have a comprehensive curriculum that will help you learn Jiu Jitsu from zero to mastery in a systematic way. We have free sample lessons and special discounts. Mastery Jiu Jitsu Online. Check it out. Another fight was Charles Oliveira versus 
Armand Sarukian. It was a great fight. It was a very close fight. I was rooting for Oliveira and I think everybody was rooting for Oliveira. He's a great fighter, the Bronx, and he had a great career and he did a great. So the five star first round, he got a guillotine, tight guillotine on, I still cannot pronounce his last name, Sarukian. Tight guillotine from standing jump guard or he got it from the turtle. He got it from the turtle, then it stood up, then he jumped guard. And then he was pushing with the legs like you're supposed to finish a guillotine. And the shorts of Sarukian start sliding off. And if you don't have the friction to push, then you lose a little bit the power of the guillotine. So that helped Sarukian with his shorts almost came off. Luckily he had underwear, but then they roll and then he had the guillotine from the mount, which is also a tough guillotine. And just like Volkanovski did with Brian Ortega, he shook him off, pushed the legs, kind of dolphin his legs and was able to escape the guillotine. Uh, Oliveira stay on top, punch him, then he got rolled and started working on the guard, but he clearly won that round. The second round, it was all Sarukian. He took Oliveira down and really punished him from inside the car. The funny thing is that at the last second, maybe the last five seconds, Oliveira actually sink in a triangle. So you give it 10 more seconds and I think Oliveira would have finished that triangle because it was deep. But the time ran out, second round, and then they went to the third round. And the third round was interesting because Sarukian took Oliveira down again, started kind of elbow him from the, from the top, I think side mounted him. But with maybe a minute left, Oliveira escaped and with a few seconds left, he sinked in at the arse choke with only like 10 seconds left. And at one point, it looked like Sarukian's body went limp. So everybody thought he went to sleep, right? And he lost consciousness. But the referee was there, they were checking. He kept squeezing the guillotine and the time ran out. When he let go, Sarukian just got up. So maybe he went to sleep and went, came back woke up again or maybe he never went to sleep and he just went flat as a maybe as a defense but uh, the decision went to Sarukian he beat Charles Oliveira a lot of people think that Oliveira should have won that fight because the submissions but he was a close fight and the judges decided to give it to Sarukian so great fighter great fight very close and unfortunately Oliveira lost so we'll see what comes next for him. Bo Nicol versus Cody Brandesh. It was a good fight. Um, uh, Brandesh gave him a very good like wrestling um, defense especially the first round but you could tell like Bo Nicol is just a superior wrestler and he's just a force of nature. Bonicle just dominated him uh, first round and the second round he took him down again and at one point sink down the rear naked choke and finished. So Bonicle continues his rise to the top of his division and he's just a very exciting fighter to watch. Uh, an amazing elite wrestler and we'll keep an eye on him. Giri Prochaska versus Alexander Rakic. Yeah, it was a good fight. Prochaska dominated first round, second round. Uh, at one point he dropped him and just start punching ground and pound the ground and the referee had to go and stop. So it was a great win for Prochaska. His uh, opponent, um, uh, Rakic, was giving him a good fight the first round but he folded on the second round and Prochaska just got a nice win under his belt and maybe he has another chance 
to recover that title. Calvin Qatar versus Aljamain Sterling. It was a good fight. Uh, Aljamain Sterling pretty much dominated that, that fight. Uh, people were booing him. There were times when they were stuck, but um, there was a point where uh, the guy Qatar shot on Sterling and he picked him up and almost dropped him on his head. The crowd went, ooh. It looked like uh, one of those pro wrestlers move. I don't know what it's called, the pile driver, power bomb, where you just pick up the guy on from his legs and drop him on his head. Fortunately, Qatar bent his head, so he didn't land on his head, he landed on the back of his shoulders. But that was an exciting, the most exciting thing that happened in that fight. And eventually, um, Al Jamin got the um, decision. He, he dominated pretty much all three rounds. Holly Holm versus Kayla Harrison. Wow, I was actually looking forward to this fight. I was actually rooting for Holly Holm because uh, her career, her charisma, she's a tough fighter and she had a tough fight against Kayla Harrison that came so impressive. She looks so strong. Her back, her biceps her arms look so fit she's been doing a great work on conditioning and strengthening for sure but Holly Hall made a mistake in that fight she clinched first round she clinched with um, Kayla Harrison and Kayla Harrison went for that throw uh, Holly Holm reversed the throw which it happens a lot with judo people because in judo they, they throw with a lot of amplitude and they don't care if they get rolled because as soon as the back hit the mat, it's an ipom. But in UFC or Jiu Jitsu, the match continues. So Kayla Harrison got rolled and Holly Holm got on top. So you will think like, oh man, uh, Holly Holm on top. But Kayla just was so strong, got back up on her feet. And then Holly Holm tried to take he kept the clinch and tried to use like a hook takedown on the judo olympic champion <laughs> and it didn't work for her she ended up on the bottom i think that was a strategic mistake by holly Holm. Uh, she lost that first round she got punished very bad on that first round the second round came i think she was more uh, careful not to engage in the clinch but Harrison was able to clinch, got that hell lock, threw her with the judo throw and start punching Holly Holm. It was a little bit painful to watch. Holly Holm turned, gave her back and Kayla Harrison um, sink in the rear naked choke and submit Holly Holm. Kayla Harrison came, first fight in the UFC. She's making a statement. She's going for that belt and it's going to be very exciting to see her in future fights. Diego Lopez had a great fight. This is a new up and comer fighter. It's very exciting to watch him and he just knocked out his, his opponent in the first round, uppercut to the body and he ju it's just show a lot of dominance at this point. Diego Lopez beat Sadiq Yusuf in the first round and he's a guy to keep an eye for sure and in another fight uh, Bobby Green beat Jim Miller Bobby Green looked great he actually like punished Jim Miller he there was a lot of blood in that fight but Jim Miller resisted he pushed through the, all the three rounds but Bobby Green got the unanimous decision and he's looking great. Davidson Figueredo defeated Kobe Garbrandt uh, via rear naked choke and Cody Garbrandt really probably started thinking about retiring at this point. Uh, it's not the same dominant fighter that he was a few years ago. And that's it for this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed UFC 300 as much as I did. Let me know in the comments what you like the most about this event 
and I'll keep uploading more videos for you guys. Subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you in the next one.